Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to review the Arteza watercolor set, the uh, half pan set. I tried the tube watercolors um, probably about nine months ago from Arteza. I swatched them out, did some doodles, and for whatever reason, I just didn't, they just didn't grab me. I didn't love them, um, so I never really put them through their paces to do a review. I kind of set them to the side and um, forgot about them. Uh, but a couple weeks ago, some viewers asked me if I'd seen the new Arteza half pan set and if I would review them. So um, I decided I would give them a try. A lot of times with companies when they have tube pa paints and they have pan paints and they're like a craft company or a newer company, a lot of times those two products will have nothing to do with one another. Like if you're getting um, Winsor Newton Cotman's line, you're getting the tubes and the pans, they're going to be pretty much the same paint in the tube and the pan or very similar formulation. Um, the same the same holds through for true for many um, paints like Sennelier or um, Grumbacher, you know, companies that make both a tube and a pan version, Van Gogh, that sort of thing, um, when they're uh, a paint company that has been producing their own paints for years and years and years. Artis is a pretty new company, so they're probably um, getting their products made from different companies that do a particular product really well. They have knocked it out of the park with so many products so far, um, so I was really excited to try the pan watercolors, even though the tube watercolors really left something to be desired with me. Although a lot of people have the tube colors from Arteza and they love them. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I never really use them that much to uh, really put them through their paces. So uh, I just kind of went on a first impression. So with that disclaimer aside, it's okay for somebody to, one person to like something and another person not to like something doesn't mean the product's bad, just meant that I didn't, it didn't jive with me. So I was really excited to get the ha the uh, half pan set, and uh, when I first swatched them out, I was like, wow, I really like these colors, they're really vibrant, uh, and then I spilled some water on my swatch. I was drinking a glass of water, or I, I'd gotten back from a walk, and I had my water bottle, and it sprayed on my swatch, and I blotted it really quickly, and I noticed, hmm, my colors didn't all lift up, which is usually what happens if you drop water on, especially student grade watercolors, you blot them and then, oh, you've got bubbles everywhere because it's lifted up the color. So I thought, well, that's pretty curious. I need to do some more tests with these watercolors. So what I did was then I took, and the stamps I used to do this, and these are the Waffle Flower Swatch stamps, and I'll link those up below. Um, I am planning to do a full review on them, but obviously you can see what they're for because I keep using them in my swatches now because I really think they make them very orderly and neat looking and it's really nice for putting into your um, your pan sets. So um, then I decided I would take a Sharpie um, and I would make some black lines and I dried them. This is a color of my, my black marker there just for reference. And then I did um, a swipe with like a synthetic flat brush of each color. And then I did a thicker swipe so I'd be able to see how opaque they are in like their full mass tone, um, probably thicker than you would use them in the past, but just to kind of get an idea of if they're uh, opaque, if they're sedimentary, do they have a film to them? Um, and I found that most of them were pretty good. I also did a lifting test, and as you can see, they do stain the paper quite a bit. That could be um, because the pigment particles are ground really fine. It could also be that they're more dye-based than like a mineral pigment-based. So so, um, you know, certain pigments stain more, and especially your, your, your uh, cyan colors, your thalo cyans, um, your quinacridones, those type of colors tend to stain. So that's what we're seeing here. But we're also seeing, <clears throat> pardon me, some staining over some colors that you typically don't see that much staining, like your, well, some of the, the phthalo greens, obviously, but your olive greens generally don't stain so much. And this um, this color here, which is our closest to ultramarine blue, uh, actually stained quite a bit. I couldn't lift it completely up. I mean, I lifted it all right, but um, I did notice that when I was doing some painting, I'll show you in a minute, um, that lifting up like clouds in a sky, it did not lift up to the white bare paper like it would with a lot of ultramarine blues. They don't call that ultramarine. They call that, um, they call it uh, Oxford blue, which is um, which is probably the one closest to ultramarine in this, which is kind of odd that there's no ultramarine here and there's no cobalt hue or anything. So the color choice was a little bit different, but I like the fact that there was no white. Um, that's often in a lot of student grade sets you end up with a white and it's it can be kind of useless if, unless you like to make kind of like a body color or you like to go in and lighten and do some pastel tones. Um, a lot of times your white doesn't get used. There is also a fairly neutral black 
here. Uh, great selection of browns, although these three look very similar to one another. I, I There's no pigment information on this, which is kind of a downer. I like to have my pigment information. I like to have light fast information. And on the tube paints, they do offer pigment information and light fast information. Um, so that also makes me believe that probably the pans are produced from a company other than the one that produces the tubes. I have reached out to Arteza for pigment information. So if they get back to me, I will put that information in the video description of this um, video and also the blog post so you can have it. But it could just be that they don't, they didn't get that information from the company that manufactures them for them. I mean, hey, if I was going to have a line of paints, I wouldn't be able to set up a factory, hire chemists and all that stuff. I would find a reputable company to make my paint for me. That's typically what companies do if they're new. So I'm definitely not knocking that. Um, but I thought there was a really nice color range here. Uh, there is not too many reds. A lot of people complain when there's too many reds in a set. There are only four reds. Um, then you get a couple oranges. You get a nice selection of yellows, which I like because you tend to use up your yellows quicker. And there's a good variety of, you've got about, you know, oh, I'd say maybe four earthy yellows, a couple of kind of golden orangey yellows, and then you've got a, a neutral and like a lemony yellow. So you do have a good variety there. You've got a nice variety of blues, although I would like to see more, or at least like a cobalt or an ultramarine for, for a nice lifting, um, neutrally cool blue. Uh, neutral, I'm sorry, neutrally to warm blue. Uh, like this periwinkle definitely has a purple undertone. Um, the Oxford blue definitely has kind of like a... Um, Oh, actually, no, that's lavender, that's periwinkle, and that is Oxford blue. Uh, so I could definitely use an ultramarine blue in the set, but um, but all in all, I think there's some really nice some really nice choices here. So I decided to do some mixing tests here, and I picked out my colors I thought would be the most primary first, um, and mixed them up. So I have a warm yellow. It's kind of a warm to neutral yellow. It's probably the most neutral yellow there is in the set. A cool red and a cool blue, and I was able to mix a nice orange, a nice green, and a slightly dull but passable purple. Then I did a cool uh, triad, and the cool triad, ironically, was more muddy than my warm triad, which usually with your cooler colors, they're more transparent but I could definitely see like a pastel uh, hint between the magenta and the, um, the lemon yellow. They both had a little bit of a haziness to them, uh, but they did mix a lovely peach color, and I could see when those colors would be um, useful. Since you have another, you read this amaranth color um, that's a nice true red. I don't think it's a problem having that that's a little bit more pastel, the magenta to be a little bit more pastel. Um, and then I did a warm triad where I used the Oxford, which is the closest to ultramarine, um, this golden yellow, which is very similar to Gamboge, and I used the Cad Red Light, and I got a nice orange, I got a very muddy green, which is to be expected, and I got a beautiful wine color. And then just for fun, I kind of did some earth colors. I used this... Uh, um, kind of rust red and olive green and uh, violet just to see what I would get there. And I got some very um, uh, lovely section of very muted tones. So um, I like the mixes. I probably wouldn't over mix, but I will show you a painting I did with a lot of mixing. And this tutorial will be up um, very soon on my YouTube channel. It's a beginner tutorial. Uh, and I did the sky. Since my ultra, the color, the Oxford blue, which was closest to ultramarine, still was a little too purple. I added a little bit of um, cerulean blue to it. And you can see where I lifted my clouds. I lifted the clouds and I put in some shadows, um, but it didn't lift right to the bright white of the paper, which is all right. But I just want to let you know that the lifting is not going to be as crisp as it would be with other brands. These colors definitely do want to stain the paper a little bit more. Um, but I did the color, I, let's say I used a pretty limited palette, I used olive green, I used oxford blue, cerulean blue, yellow ochre, um, what I, let's see, what the, uh, mahogany, which is kind of like a, a burnt sienna, and let's see, that was it, that was it, so it was only like four, five, and I used, um, I did use the cad red light, or, no, I'm sorry, the um, Scarlet Red. So it was a limited palette, probably about five colors, was that five? Um, and it, I was able to mix all the colors that I needed. It handled pretty well. Um, I was able to get vibrancy. I was able to get muted colors very easily. And um, yeah, pretty pretty happy with how that came out. The 
I would say the colors are not going to disperse quite as fast as like other brands. I didn't have any problems blending, but it's not like I touched my brush down and the color went whoosh. It was definitely, um, you know, you would blend the colors across. It blended fine, but it's not, you're not getting a lot of like uh, dispersion with this. Um, it's really good for doing illustrative things like just some little flowers like I did here when I was just doodling. Uh, I did some watery background, like background strokes and then did some more crisp strokes on top spattering um, and just kind of painting some leaves and overlaying some shadows. I think it worked really well for that. This is the Arteza paper too so I did want to mention that because I have used their sheet paper in their little um, watercolor pad sketchbooks here. They're, they have a smooth finish on one side and a texture finish on the other so what I tend to use their paper for more than anything is for rubber stamping and I stamp on the back side and I find that the back side of this paper with um, watercolor markers works really really well so if you're a card maker um, if you use a real brush pens either Arteza's brand or any other brand they work really well on the back side of this paper um, and it's very inexpensive paper I would definitely not call it artist quality even though they do list it as their premium line, I would definitely consider this a student quality paper. If you do a lot of wet washes, if you do a lot of scrubbing, and it's going to pill. But um, if you're just doodling like I was here with these roses, it's perfect. It's per I, I actually use this paper to make my postcards uh, because I'm generally just doodling, doing one layer, and um, and that's that. And I also use these paints on the, um, the Sketchbook Sunday this week, which I know wasn't my best. And... Um, yeah, it is what it is, right? <laughs> sometimes your sketchbook, you know, sketchbook is a place to just work freely and have fun, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but I did use that for this project, and I found on this paper, I didn't like it on this untextured paper. Um, I felt like, uh, I, I don't know, I just felt like everything looked kind of muted and matte and flat on this paper. So I think if I was going to use these paints, I would definitely use it on a textured paper, like the textured side of the Arteza paper, even though it's a really inexpensive paper, I like the look of it on the textured side versus the untextured. And um, I liked it on this cold pressed paper, and I think I would have liked it even better on rough paper. Um, that's probably a personal preference, but that's, I think I, I think the characteristics of this paint I like I like on a rougher paper. I like it when you mix colors together and then you have a really, really wet wash and you can kind of see them start to separate and give you a little bit of granulation um, on the really wet wash. And you can get that effect with a lot of student grade paints, but I really I like this. Now I'm calling it a student grade paint. Um, it I think Arteza lists it in their premium or expert line, but um, this set is like right around $35. I think it's $34.99 on the Arteza website and $35.99 on Amazon. Amazon. Um, and I left my palette dirty because I wanted to show you one thing I do really like about this palette is that the colors don't beat up on it. So I just did that landscape and you can see all my colors. I could see really well when I was mixing and the palette is nice and bright white. The set also comes with a water brush which is um, which is really handy. I use the water brush to do the doodles in my journal there that I showed you those little flowers and the tray lifts out. Now a curious thing about this is that this is about um, I would say a quarter inch smaller than your typical 48 set. So the the palette feels really sturdy because of that. I actually um, did run into a little problem when I first got this and I was trying to put my pans and the pans were not like their pans were too big. These pans are a little bit bigger than like the Master's Touch watercolor set I reviewed. They're just a smidgen higher, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch taller. Um, so they so that would mean it holds more paint, I think. Uh, you know, some pans are a little bit smaller, like the portable painters pans are a little bit shallower and so are Windsor Newtons than like most standard pans, standard half pans. Um, so I had to go in with pliers and actually unroll a little bit of the little teeth that grab your pans because they were not latching in. So if you get this set, you may find that some of your pans are not going to fit in. I think it's they've rolled the metal down too far on some of those teeth. You just take a pair of pliers and roll it back. Um, so I did that in a couple of spots and then it held my pans nice and securely. Um, you can see how some of them do want to kind of push up like right there, you can see they kind of want to push up a little bit because the pan holder is a little small. Uh, I just think it was over rolled in the factory. I don't know if that's a common issue, but if you have that issue on your palette, then uh, then do that. Uh, so I'm going to clean this up now because I did want to. I just wanted you to see that they are not going to that it doesn't beat up because that's an issue I hear a lot with. Um, with watercolor palettes. I've had it myself, especially plastic palettes or brand new metal ones. They tend to bead. That's why I like to use like a ceramic plate a lot. 
Um, and I did notice that this palette stained. I'm not sure if it's going to stain now, um, but a really easy fix for that is to use a magic eraser because I'm like, oh great, I'm going to review this and it's going to be all stained up. Uh, but I found that if I just take a magic eraser, I can get any of those stains off. So, and that also is nice if you have a brand new palette, you can use a magic eraser on it and it will um, remove some of the residue that is left behind on your, I, I don't know if it sands it or if it just removes residue that's left behind and does help things not beat up quite so bad. So if you have that issue on a palette, give that a try because that will probably that'll help you. But yeah, it comes up nice and bright white. Um, that was one of the issues I had with the Master's Touch palette. It was kind of like a purple shade, but this is nice and bright. But I did want to show you that here just because um, I would mentioned that I kind of felt that the Master's Touch palette was a little flimsy, but then when I compared it to other ones, I'm like, well, it's about the same as my Meaden one. It's not that bad. Um, you can see how this is kind of like a purpley, like a pale purpley gray, and this is more of a bright white. So I just wanted to show you that. The other thing I like about this palette is the palette trace Cut, doesn't doesn't go right down to the you can push it down to the table but it kind of is out a little bit flatter so I don't think your paint would dribble through the hole like slide off as much as like a palette where the the palette flops all the way to the table um, I'm gonna show you the size difference here I can probably illustrate that better just by trying to take out the the insert from the the uh, master's touch one because I was thinking, well, I thought this one was a little big for those pans. I was going to swap them, but this will not fit in there. You see that? It's just a little bit too big. And when you close it up, you can see that the Arteza one's a little bit smaller. So you're not going to be able to like wedge an extra half pan in each row if you wanted to do that. So let's see. So if I put them on, the, if I put them right next to each other, this one is oh my gosh let's go this way you can kind of see that the master that the other pan the other 48 pan sets are like about a quarter of an inch three eighths of an inch three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch i'd say bigger um so i don't think that makes much of a difference but just might as well show you since it's something i noticed i guess Let's see, what else would I like to mention about these paints? Um, I can show you the swatch, the main swatch in comparison with the um, with the Master's Touch one. It was kind of funny, when I was swatching out the Arteza ones, I automatically was like, wow, I really like the feel of this paint. Um, and I, and then, then when I was swatching out the Master's Touch, I didn't really have a strong reaction to the feel of the paint. Um, I did with the Arteza ones, but now that I'm looking at the the swatches comparatively, I think that the Master Touch touch colors are actually a little bit more vibrant. Um, so it's kind of funny when you you know you will get a certain gut reaction, I think, to different paint, and it could be you're having a gut reaction because um, you know how much something how much you paid for something, you know, like well if I paid ten dollars for this, how good can it be? Or I paid a hundred dollars for this, this has got to be good, you know. So it can be kind of difficult to separate your preconceived notions to a paint, um, you know, when you're testing it out. Uh, so it does help to go back and kind of compare to other examples, the other swatches that you've done to really see how uh, how they perform. I say for 35 bucks, it's, it's a good deal. I see they have a regular price of like um, 85 or $95 on Amazon, which I, I hope they're not going to inflate those prices like that in the future, because I think at $35, it's a great it's a great value. I think if you're paying, you know, more than 50, not so much. So I say for 35 bucks, they're, they're a decent paint. They do stain a little bit more than I would like. Um, so that, that's one thing that I wish they lifted a little bit better for when I'm doing clouds and stuff like that. When I was doing the rocks though, I was able to scrub up my color for the rocks and then scrape away. You would see some of the stain, staining underneath of the, the um, purple and the greens, uh, but it doesn't bother me. If I wanted to be able to scrub something out to white though, I don't think I would have a very easy time with the Arteza ones. Um, that said, I think across the board Arteza makes a beautiful product. I think these watercolors are alright. I think they're definitely worth the price. Um, so if you've used them, let me know what you think in the comments below. I think they're probably right on the same um, the same wavelength and quality as the Master's Touch. So, you know, if you have them, you probably don't need to get these two. But if you're trying to decide between the two, um, I think the Arteza ones do have a little bit more texture to them. They do have a little bit more interest and in difference between the colors, which I like. Um, they have a little more character to them. Whereas the, I feel like the Master's Touch colors are a little bit more smoother and flatter. So it really depends on your preference reference there and um, I think they're a good price they're good paint for the money um, 
and um, and there you have it I guess um, if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below I hope you found this helpful and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like my reviews till next time happy crafting